How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, I'm gearing up for a solar shed project where my shed is not going to be tied to the grid. It's not tied into my home electrical system. And I want to have some capabilities like powering some inside lights, an exterior light, charging my power tools, and even charging the batteries on my lawn equipment. So I need to properly size my panels, charge controller, battery, and then also the inverter. So today I want to talk to you about a big misconception when you're just getting started. Here I have three 100 watt panels and it's not as easy as just adding those up and expecting my system to produce 300 watts. It's a little more complex than that so I want to walk you through that and then go over the five different factors that you consider that can really bring down the overall power output to your system and impact your overall system design. So let's use this system as example these three 100 watt panels going into my EcoFlow Delta Pro and then get you the knowledge you need to correctly design your own system for your application. So what we need to understand when it comes to the actual rating of panels. For instance, this one is a Thunderbolt Solar from Harbor Freight and it's rated at 100 watts. Now that rating, 100 watts of power output is under standard test conditions or STC. Well, there's three main factors. One, the actual surface temp and specifically the cell temperature would need to be at 25 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that is pretty darn cool for a panel. Remember that is not the outside temperature, that's actually the cell temperature. So even if it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside with direct sunlight, these are gonna heat up well above that and that does degrade the overall power output of this panel. So it'd be much lower than 100 watts. The second factor would be the solar strength or the sun strength, which is an irradiance of 1000 watts per square meter. Now that basically doesn't mean much to most of us, but that's basically as good as it's gonna get. And then the third factor would be an air mass coefficient of 1.5. The air mass really gives us an indication of how much sunlight is actually going to make it through the atmosphere and not be reflected before getting to your panels. Now these three factors just give us a baseline so we can fairly compare a 100 watt panel from brand A versus a 100 watt panel from brand B. Just know that standard test conditions are not gonna be impossible for you to replicate, but are gonna be pretty hard for you to consistently get. For instance, it was just sunny here and I went and looked at the power being output from these three 100 watt panels in series and it actually was th right at 300 or a little over 300. Why is that? Well, it's been cloudy most of the day, so the actual cell temperature is pretty cool. These panels are facing south, they're at the right angle, the sun was directly overhead, and the cell temperature was actually close to STC, so they're actually outputting very close to the rating of 100 watts apiece. Just know that's not gonna be super common, especially on a very sunny day where the cell temperature is gonna heat up quite a bit. Specifically, my recommendation would be to take 80% of the rated capacity. For this system, instead of 100 watts, I take 80 watts for each panel, adding all three up, that'd be 240 watts of power output from my setup. I think that's gonna give you a more conservative estimate and set you up for success as you're designing for your application. Now remember, this is for a DIY setup, whether it's a camper, a trailer, a shed, or any number of other projects where these small panels and a battery or a complete solar generator like the EcoFlow Delta Pro comes in handy. But if you're trying to do a professionally installed system like I am, I'm putting 11 kilowatts up on my roof. Well, you're probably gonna need a little help with that and the price is gonna be at an entirely different level. Now, I recommend that you either purchase that by saving up cash or look at a loan product with a reasonable interest rate. So a good place to start is just how much would it cost for me to offset my overall monthly power bill? That's where I started and there's a link in the description where you can go over and fill in a few details on your home in your area and that will give you the overall size and kilowatts of the system you need and the associated estimated cost so you can start preparing to get solar and then if that's something that you actually want to do from that same cost estimator you can get connected with some local installers and start to get multiple quotes to make the best decision for your home so let's talk about the five main factors that can also impact the overall power output from the system that you need to consider so factor number one is going to be the direction of your panels most of you guys are going to be in the northern hemisphere so that means due south is going to be your best positioning now I do understand if you're mounting on a shed roof, you might be limited. Maybe your due south is completely shaded, so you need to pick another path. 
Just know if you faced east or west, you're looking at a reduction in about 15 to 20% of the overall power output compared to south. And if you have to face north, the opposite direction, it can be up to 30% loss. And then going on to factor number two, we're looking at the angle that we set our panels. Now that can be different in the summer versus winter, but there is an easy reference that you have probably right on your phone. So you could take your iPhone or your Samsung, and remember you have like a measurement app that usually has a bubble level on it. So from horizontal, you'd want to measure it up. For me, it's 17 degrees in the summertime. Now wintertime, technically my optimal angle is 47 degrees. So it's substantially different. And if I had to pick a year round, it's about 30 or 31 degrees would be a good compromise. And then for your reference, I will put a link in the description where you can get the exact angles for your specific location. Now, number three goes to wire sizing. And why we need to consider wire sizing is because as you go up in the amperage and you go longer wire lengths, you're going to need to get thicker wire. Now remember, gauge of wire goes down. So you're gonna start off in kind of the 18 gauge lineup and go all the way down depending on how many amps and how many feet you need a run. Why we need to consider this is because we want to minimize what is called the line loss. So what power loss we're getting through the actual just wiring to 2% or under. Now for me, if I'm just doing a standard setup here, this is actually only running about five amps. So 12 gauge is plenty to have very minimal line loss in this type of setup. Now, before moving on to number four, just a reference, it's pretty cloudy out right now. And these three panels that we saw producing all the way up to 300 watts before are actually only putting out about 60 watts. But because it's partly cloudy, that's gonna vary quite a bit as the sun comes in and out. Now, number four deals with dirty panels. As you put in your new system, everything's clean, working perfectly, but over time, those panels are gonna get dirty and it is a maintenance item that you need to keep track of. Again, all of our areas are gonna be a little different. For instance, if you're in like Georgia with a bunch of evergreen trees, you know you have a pollen cycle where a bunch of pollen drops and dusts everything. Well, you just need to plan for that then. And once the pollen drops, you go ahead and wash and clean off your panels. Additionally, obviously snow. If snow is completely covering your panels, well, obviously that power can be put all the way down to zero. So you do need to get the snow off if you wanna produce any power in the winter months. So speaking of covering panels, number five deals with shading. Not something to be taken lightly, and you do need to consider where the sun's at in the morning, coming up through our lunchtime hours, afternoon, and then going into the evening hours to get the most out of that. Now, in some scenarios, you're just gonna have to have a little shading on your panels. Most of these modern panels are pretty good with some bypass diodes built in. So if you have a series wiring relationship like this, if one panel shaded, it's not totally taking out your system. But in general, you're going to want to minimize the amount of shading on your system. Or if it's something where you're just gonna have shading, there is different parts that you can get for your system like power optimizers, which might be something that you need to consider if you think the simple bypass diodes in the panel are not gonna to do. So those are the five factors that you need to consider to make sure you're getting the most out of your system. And remember, instead of using that rated power, go ahead and take 80% of that to make sure you have a conservative estimate and you're sizing your system correctly. Now we talked a little bit about the wiring, which this is series wiring, but there's also parallel and a series parallel, which can get a little more complex, but you might actually need to leverage those different wiring strategy for your system. So check out this video right here. I'll walk you through series, parallel and series parallel so you get a good idea and again can leverage that in your own system. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.